Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a bunch of audit procedures and we have to determine whether they are a test of control or substantive test of transaction and how do they, how do they relate to the audit objectives, audit related objectives. Well, what are they? Well, you got you to gotta make sure you know them. Occurrence, completeness, accuracy, posting and summarization, classification, timing and presentation. If you don't know these what, what each one of them means, you want to go back to farhatlectures.com and review that session because I'm going to be working an exercise here. Although I'm going to be illustrating those concepts in an example, but you really have a, to have a good understanding about them. I don't replace Farhat's, Farhat lectures, don't replace your CPA review course. You can keep your course. I'm a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can help you understand the material differently than your CPA review course. It will help you with your CPA review course. It will help you on your CPA exam. My subscription is quite nominal. You can try it for a month. You like it, you keep it, otherwise you cancel. Your potential gain is passing the exam itself. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other CPA sections and courses. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So again, let's take a look at those activities, those audit procedures, and determine first whether this audit procedure is a test of control or substantive test of transaction, and if so, which audit objective it is satisfying. Okay, and these are the audit objective, and make sure you are comfortable with those. You make sure you are comfortable with those. Those are very important on the exam, starting with the first transaction. Before we start, actually, you, you, do you have an idea what how do we how do we perform test of control? I, I hope you do. Well, test of test of control would require you to perform certain procedures. You want to make sure you are comfortable, like making inquiries as a test of control, examine document, observation, reperformance. But examine comes a lot. So if you see the word examine, be careful. This could be a test of control. You just just things you want to remember. Make sure you know the difference between a test of control versus substantive test of transaction. Let's start with the first one. Trace a number of shipping document to entry in the accounting system. So we're looking at the shipping document, which is a physical document that support our transaction. And we're taking those documents and tracing them back to the entries, to the entries in the accounting system. What do you think that is, first of all, is this a test of control or is this a substantive testing? Because this is what you need to know first. When do you perform this step? Well, we perform this step as substantive test of transaction. Why do we why do we do so? This is not a test of control. Why do we do so? Well, we want to make sure that if we have a shipping document, we shipped something, we made a sale, that sale is recorded in the accounting system. What is the fear here? The fear is completeness. It means we did not recorded it. The transactions are not complete. We perform the step as a substantive test of transaction and the audit objective is completeness. So let's take a look at the second transaction. Examine a sample of warehouse removal slips for signature of authorized individual. Well, once you hear the word examine, it's a good chance it's a test of control. And this is a test of control. So examine, I would say we go with test of control. Now, which audit objective it is have it is satisfying well you're examine the sample of a warehouse slip to see if the removal if the removal slip has been signed by the authorized individual so did this actually happen this is what we're trying to find out did the authorized individual actually sign the removal slip of the warehouse and if the answer is yes then yes so we're looking to see if it actually happened so here what we are testing for is occurrence occurrence that's the objective that's being that's being met in this test occurrence it's a test of control and it is occurrence let's take a look at the third transaction examine a contract term for large unusual sales transaction to determine whether management has included adequate disclosure of those transactions in the footnotes now although though i said most of the time it will be test of control but here you have to be careful it does it doesn't have to always be a test of control here we're examining but look what we're examining a contract a contract means the whole thing so when you're examining a contract you're not looking at a sample you're looking at the whole thing you're looking at the whole picture okay for unusual 
a, a unusual sales transaction. Well, hopefully the, the word transaction will kind of ring a bell that you are substantive test of transaction. This is a substantive test of transaction. So, so although the word examine, okay, we could have, for example, review rather than examine. We put the word review contract terms, okay? They, they put the word examine kind of to trick you. And although I said examine most of the time is that test of control, but look, it doesn't have to be. So be careful. So I could pay review contract terms. So it's a test of transaction. Now, which audit objective do you think it is It is satisfying? Well, I would say, I mean, in a sense, it's it's easy to, to know this. Why? Because you are looking at disclosure. You are looking at disclosure. You are determining whether they made the appropriate disclosure. And what does, what does disclosure deals with? Disclosure deals with the presentation. Are you presenting everything that needs to be presented? in those footnotes. So it's a test of transaction and the, the audit objective is presentation. Presentation. What is presentation? It means you are showing everything that needs to be showing about the financial statement. You are reporting. You are appropriately describing all the relevant information in an un understandable way. This is what you are doing. Let's take a look at the fourth transaction. Again, the word examine examine here examine notice okay examine eh, i would say i will start to lean toward test of control until i find out what am i examining examine duplicate copies of shipping document for evidence that quantities were being verified before shipment so all what i'm looking for here is is an indication an indication of whether whether we verified the shipment, we verified the quantity. And how do we know this? We're looking at those shipping documents and there should be someone's signature that evidence that they verified the quantity. When do we do this type? When do we do this? Do we do this during the substantive test of transaction or are we looking for some indicators? Indicators, we're looking for some indicators. Evidence that quantities were being verified. That's all what we're doing. Did they do it? Yes or no? I would say this is a test of control. So the word, notice the word examine here is, is definitely taking you toward the test of control for sure. And it is a test of control. Now, which objective this is being, uh, being satisfied? Well, hopefully kind of, it makes sense that they are going over after the accuracy. They want to make sure that when it's verified, the information is accurate. The information is accurate. So it's the accuracy objective. Let's take a look at this transaction. Select a sample of payroll payment processed and agree hours to employee time record. When do you perform this transaction? So you want to make sure what you're doing here is you want to make sure that the employee hours, okay, the, and the payroll payment, sample of the payroll payment, they agree. They agree. And basically what you're looking at here is the dollar amount if they agree. Now you can take the number of hours versus the payroll payment. And depending on how much the employee is making, you, you're agreeing this. Do you think you do this during the test of control or substantive testing? I would say we're dealing with a dollar amount. I would say this is a substantive test of transaction. Okay. Now, what is the objective of this something like this? Well, what you are agreeing two numbers to each other. You're making sure they are correct. What does that mean? You are dealing with accuracy again. The objective here is accuracy, accuracy. Let's take a look at number six. Now, you are using an audit software to foot and cross foot sales journal and trace the balance to the general ledger. Okay, so simply put, you are using some software to do what? To make sure that when I add up all my transaction, foot and cross foot, the sales journal, I'm going to trace them. I'm going to make sure they match the general, the, the general ledger. Make sure they match the general ledger. And what happened is this. You have to understand basic accounting here. And all that would require you to understand basic accounting. Before we go any further, do you think this is a test of control or substantive testing. That's the first thing we would like to answer before we determine what type of objective is being met. Well, I would say this is a test, a substantive test of transaction. What you are doing here is making sure that the transaction that occur in the sales journal are appropriately posted in the general ledger for each client. Now, so it's a substantive test of transaction. What 
is it testing? Well, here what's testing, we have an objective that's called posting, posting, and summarization. And this is what it is testing. It's making sure that after you post it in the sales journal, you post it as sales, let's assume it's sales on credit, you update, you updated the customer's account general ledger to make sure everything is matching you have all the information you are posting appropriately and posting is something that we need to be aware of something that accountant do so this is posting and summarization that's the audit objective that's being met seven examine examine again what did i say every time we see the word examine we lean toward test of control but not necessary so but i'm now i'm leaning just by looking at the word examine voucher package and related vendor invoice for evidence of approval am i looking for a dollar amount no i'm looking for some evidence for some indicator for some indicator so this is definitely a test of control test of control okay now the question is what is it testing well approval of account classification <laughs> guess what we have an audit objective that deals with classification so it's a test of control and the audit that's the audit related test is classification what's classification how do you misclassify something for example you might have something as an expense cost of goods sold but you you um, you posted it rather than cost of goods sold it's still an expense but you put it under advertising expense or something to do with repairs it's under miscellaneous so it had to do with classification this is what classification is here you're examining the voucher package and related vendor invoice that those transaction were posted in the right account in the right classification looking for evidence that that happened that's what we're looking for here therefore it's a test of control test of control so it's not being misclassified somebody approved this transaction we're looking to see if that approval is there usually the approval is a initial the individual initialed it so yeah it's going into the right classification now select a sample of sales invoices okay sales invoices and agree prices to the uh, to the approved price list again once you see the dollar amount kind of lean more toward substantive test of transaction and this is what you're doing here we're looking at the sales invoice and comparing it making sure the dollar amount is correct well i kind of gave you the answer uh, correct it means accuracy and agree prices to the approved to the approved price list you're determining whether the transaction is accurate or not. So it's a substantive test of transaction and the audit objective that's being met is accuracy. Accuracy. Is it correct? Yes or no? Select a sample of entries in the cash receipt journal. So we're looking at the cash receipt journal and what we're going to be doing, we're going to trace it back to posting an individual customer account record. All right. So so I can tell you the audit objective is posting and summarization because it's the word posting is here. So it's clearly posting. So we want to make sure that the cash receipt journal, it's being posted. And this is important because if we receive cash from customers, we want to post that amount to the individual's personal account. OK, so it's definitely posting and summarization. Is this a test of control or substantive test of transaction? Well, I would say this is substan substantive test of transaction because it deals with the dollar amount that, that we are comparing, making sure the cash receipt journal accounts are being traced back to the individual account account receivable. Now, a test of control for this will be, uh, do we have a proof that this is being done? If we have, if we select the sample, uh, to see if it's being done a proof of being done okay for example after we do it someone initials it then it will be a test of control here it's a substantive testing because we are comparing the dollar amount and trace it to the to posting we're looking to see if it's posted in the individual account receivable account okay cash receipts we want to make sure we do that if we don't do that customers are not going to be happy with us because when they send us the money they want their account to be updated they send us the money we post it to their account receivable they are satisfied i would say this type of this type of account this type of exercise is important for you to study when studying for the exam why because it tells you about the audit related objectives remember occurrence completeness accuracy posting summarization classification timing and presentation i don't believe we had anything with timing we had presentation we did classification posting completeness yes so just want to make sure timing means is it 
it's, it's, is it in the right, is it on the correct date? I mean, we did not have an example, but you need to know those. You need to know those by heart before sitting on the exam. Also, at the end of this recording, I would like to remind you, if you have a CPA review course, that's great. Keep it. Add farhatlectures.com as a supplemental tool to your CPA review course. My monthly subscription is nominal. You are investing for your CPA exam. Don't shortchange yourself. Your CPA exam is a lifetime investment. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.